got Mavenclad. In this video, I'm going to be answering your questions about Mavenclad. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Hey! Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for families impacted by MS from around the globe. I love answering your YouTube questions, and I had a blast the other day doing an impromptu Ask Me Anything live stream, but I didn't get to all of the questions asked. There were several questions asked about Mavenclad, codename for Cladramine. And in this video, I'm gonna be answering those questions. So let's jump in. Our first question comes from Vajanko, who writes, I have a question regarding Cladramine. If the treatment is done both years and I have MS progression one year after treatment, then what? That's a big, important question, so let's unpack it. Most MS therapies are continuous. You constantly take them, a pill twice a day, a shot once a week, an infusion once a month, etc. A couple of the MS therapies, and Mavenclad is an example, are discontinuous. You don't continually take them. So Mavenclad is really weird in that regard. You take a pill for five days in a row, and then you wait one full month where you don't do anything. Then you take five more pills, so five days in a row. Then you're done for the entire year. So you've taken 10 pills in the first year. Then on the anniversary of the first time you did it, you repeat once. You take a pill a day for five days. You wait that next month. You take a pill a day for five days. And then you're literally finished taking any more Mavenclad unless there's new disease activity. So after those two years, year one and year two, we observe you, we examine you, we get MRIs, we see you in clinic, but you're not actually physically taking a medicine. So how's that possible? It's possible because of the way Mavenclad works. Mavenclad is a discontinuous therapy. It's retraining your immune system to knock it off and be less pro-inflammatory or auto-reactive. And so, ostensibly, once you've trained your immune system to do that, you may not need to remind it, which is really awesome. Now, in fact, we have some long-term follow-up data looking at people that took Mavenclad, Cladrabine, and they went out 10 years. And what we found amongst the people that we could follow up with is that half of them didn't have a need for retreatment. They literally went 10 years and didn't have an attack and they didn't have new spots. And so we just observed them, which is really kind of awesome. Now, Vijanko asks a different situation. What happens if you do the first 10 pills the first year, the second 10 pills the second year, and then in year three or year four, you have disease activity? So if you have a new attack or a new spot, what do you do? Really, you do the same thing you do with any other drug. So let's say that I had you on an injection that you were taking once a day and you had new disease activity three years in. What would we do? Well, we might switch your drug. We might escalate to something different. So just because this therapy is discontinuous doesn't really change the rules of engagement. And if you're on year three and you have breakthrough disease, we're going to address that the same way we would with any other drug. We're going to probably treat you with steroids to help you hasten the recovery from your event. And then we're going to critically look at, do we need to do something different? If the decision is made to keep on keeping on, we may not reduce cladramine. In the American label, we're not allowed to give another course of cladramine in year three and year four. We are allowed after that. So during that year three, that year four, we could choose to do nothing, which bluntly is not my style, or we could escalate to a different therapy. Now, I want to call out, if you took cladramine year one, year two, and nothing happened to you in year three and year four, and then you had an event in year five, you could take another cycle of cladribine. So my point here is we don't limit options just because you've taken this discontinuous therapy. The options are still the same and the rules of engagement are really the same. Our next question comes from Harry M who asks, has there been any research on taking what I believe the word is abagio? So abagio and cladribine simultaneously. I've been on abagio since diagnosis and I have a new brainstem lesion since the original diagnosis. Two's better than one. Thanks. So Harry's asking a really interesting question about stacking drugs, taking two drugs together. And we don't have a lot of data to support doing that, but we do have some concerns for risk. I personally would not put someone on a Baggio and Mavenclad together. Mechanistically, I think that we might create a problem. Let me explain. The way that a Baggio works is it doesn't kill cells. It holds them in the freeze cycle so they can't move. So that's a Baggio. The way Mavenclad works is obviously very, very different. It identifies 
some of the adult BNT cells and knocks them down and lets them come back up. And so it's this pulsed, you know, suppression that we see that is the reason that Mavenclad works. And if you did both, I can hypothesize, you would knock down cells and the ones that came back would be suppressed in their ability to respond. And you could end up with a situation where you've overly immunosuppressed the human being. So that's not really an approach that I would recommend taking. But I think it's really interesting that you're thinking about stacking medicines. I'm not opposed to stacking medicines. I'm just not sure those are the best two to stack. And in my mind, in the future, we will most certainly add multiple therapies together to treat MS. I think that we're going to need three therapies to treat MS. We're going to need anti-inflammatories. And speaking generally, Mavenclad and even Abagio are types of anti-inflammatories. We also need a second agent, a neuroprotective agent, which doesn't exist yet. And thirdly, we need a remyelinating agent, which also doesn't exist yet. But I do believe that in the future, anti-inflammatory, neuroprotective, and remyelinating will be the triad of therapies taken together to beat this disease. Connor asks, I'm a man on Mavenclad. I'm two months in, and we want to have a baby. Is it safe to start, or should we wait the six months they recommend for women? That's a great question, Connor. Now, Mavenclad, very interestingly, is out of your body very quickly, like within a day. So when you take five days of Mavenclad, it's out of your system, like within a couple days after that. But the impact on sperm and eggs may last a little bit longer. Now, the recommendation of waiting six months is overkill. It's arguably maybe double what it actually needs to be, even for a woman. But it's done for super important safety reasons, because if there was Mavenclad that impacted your sperm, it is possible that there could be a risk of a birth defect. So I'm gonna actually agree with the recommendation that you wait a full six months. There's no reason to take risks and risk a birth defect uh, with a future child, just my two cents. But between now and then, I strongly encourage you and your partner to practice a lot with contraception. Practice, you know, makes perfect. Rebo Punk asks, is it safe to get the Pfizer? I finished my second year of cladribine on March of this year. So Rebo, I believe, is asking about the Pfizer mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. So he's saying, I got my second course of cladribine March of this past year, and now he wants to take the COVID vaccine. So we are currently in July. It's July 4th, actually, so happy July 4th. And so March, April, May, June, July. So we're five months past his second course. So let's talk through this. The, we believe that the, the best time to take a COVID-19 vaccine, if you're on Mavenclad, is after your cell lines have returned back to normal. When you take your course of cladribine, it pushes down your cells for about maybe two to four months, and then they bounce back up. And what's really nice about this drug is that you can easily check where someone is by checking a simple blood test, a CBC and it'll tell you where your white blood cell count is, and it'll tell you where your lymphocyte count is. So easily, we could check labs and make sure that his counts are back to normal. And I would expect five months after a course of cladribine that they would be back to normal, and we would assume that he would respond to a vaccine just like everyone else. So the quick answer is it would probably be completely fine. There's some really interesting research that came out maybe about a month ago. There's an Israeli uh, MS neurologist named Acheron who did a really cool paper where she looked at the timing of this exact Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine with her patients on cladribine. And it turned out that it didn't seem to matter when the cladribine was given and when the shot was taken. Even if you took cladribine and then very quickly afterwards took the COVID vaccine shot, it seemed to work, which is really encouraging. Either way you slice it, I think that Rebo Punk is in a fine shape to get the COVID vaccine. If you'd like to learn more about Mavenclad, click the video that's on your screen right now. My name's Aaron Boster, and as always, thank you for learning about MS with me.